So the other day, the drive shaft on the flail mower blew apart. I got that fixed, and then I finished up some flail mowing. End of the day, I pulled the tractor into the shed. I look down, and I see a puddle of hydraulic oil behind the back wheel. So it was the end of the day, and I said, I am done. So I threw some kitty litter down and said, I'll look at this another day. Well, today is another day, and now it's time to look and see what the heck is going on here. This tire is fluid filled, so that's why I have it barely up off the ground. Well, this looks like something that has been coming for a long time, and obviously I never noticed it, but it appears that the back tire was rubbing on that hydraulic line. It looks like these lines were under this fender. Oh, this has been up. Okay, this was part of the fender. And that got bent, so I must have hit something. Yeah, that's where the lines were. So obviously I hit something, it bent that up and pushed it up against the wheel. So maybe it didn't take that long to happen. But now I have to cut this line off, or not cut it off, cut this covering off, trace that line out and hopefully easily replace it. I'm not sure how far up it goes. I think it's all pretty easily accessible. You probably already know this, but if you don't, always keep a box or a bag of really cheap kitty litter around. It's great for oil spills, oil drips. I think it's the same thing as oil dry. It's basically crumbled up, dried up clay. Works great at absorbing those oils and you just sweep it up and throw it away. Well, here's my line. Uh, pretty standard looking other than this 45 degree bend here. And of course, here is the area where it wore through. So 
we do have a shop relatively local that makes up hydraulic lines. I think I'll go to them first and see if they can just make one for me. Well, another road trip, another repair. I, I think I'm more prepared this time that this is gonna be more expensive than I expected. Now, it shouldn't shock me like the drive shaft did. The drive shaft, I don't know what I was expecting to pay for that, but I was not expecting to pay $400. This hydraulic line, now because I'm a little bit in shock from the drive shaft, I'm gonna guess that this approximate 36 inch piece of hydraulic line is gonna cost about $85. In my mind, I'm thinking this should be about $35, but with the cost of things, maybe 50, but then after the experience with the drive shaft, I'm thinking 85, so I'm prepared to pay $85 for this, and I will be once again surprised if it's more than that. I mean, it could be 100, but now I don't even know what to think anymore. So before we get to that point, let me know your guess of what you think it will cost or should cost, and then we'll see who's right. Lately I've been asking people more if they want to be on camera, because I think it'd be interesting for you, the viewer. Uh, anyway, he respectfully declined being on camera, and I understand, because it is kind of awkward. Anyway, uh, he uh, made up the line in like, gosh, I don't even think it took three minutes to make up the new line. But what was your guess for the price of that 36 inch hydraulic line? I'll give you just a second to mark your guess down in the comments and then I'll tell you. Remember my guess was $85 and uh, that was based on the fact that I thought it should cost $35 so then I added more to it and uh, landed on $85. Anyway, the cost of that hose was, ding, 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 total out the door cost $87. It was like $82 plus $5 sales tax. So 87 bucks out the door. Even he was surprised by the cost of that. But, you know, he just types it into the computer based on the fittings he had to use, the line, all that stuff. It's all calculated. So, man, I don't know what it would cost to put some hydraulic lines on a big excavator or something like that. But 87 bucks for that little line. But at least I was, uh, at least I had a good guess this time. I wasn't shocked. I have to say, I love where we live. I love that it's rural, that I'm not dealing with traffic. You might have to drive a little further to get somewhere, but it's generally an easy drive. And uh, very fortunate that it's a farming community and that uh, hydraulic valve store shop is right there. So pretty lucky there. He did share with me uh, when we were chatting that uh, he said, as long as your part is not Komatsu, he said, they are extremely expensive. And that's because, I'm going to say a dirty word here, because they have proprietary fittings. And you know, anything proprietary is going to be expensive. So, uh, to all you Komatsu users out there, sorry, but I thought that was pretty interesting. Wait, wait, listen to that five liter. That is what I love about this truck. Sounds good, feels good. Now I don't drive like that all the time, although Ann might disagree. 
But look at the average fuel economy of this truck. This is a full-size F-150 with a 5.0 V8 engine, and we're getting almost 21 miles per gallon, and most of that is around town. So I am totally impressed. All right. So that should fit right on. I think I'll put the back one on first, then I'll slide the old protective sheath over it. I don't know how important that is under here. I think it's mostly for sun control or sun damage, but. Well, other than checking for leaks and topping off the hydraulic fluid, I think we're in good shape and putting the tire back on. But first I wanna start it and just check for leaks. And I know that uh, there's a danger of hydraulic injection that you hear about. If there's a pinhole, you don't wanna put your hand over it because it could actually inject into your skin. So I've got a clean towel here and I'll just hold this around the fittings and check for leaks that way. We're good. All right, this could be the fun part. This tire weighs several hundred pounds, so I can't just pick it up and put it in place because it's full of liquid ballast. So bad. I just get a couple of these on just to hold it in place. And I can jack it up and move it where it needs to go. There, I'll fully torque those to factory specifications off camera. Okay, I ran the tractor some more, went through all the uh, positions of the loader, let the oil settle back down again. We'll see how low we are. We might be like a quart low. Yeah, hope I have some. Jackpot, Kubota, 
UDT2, Super Universal Trans Hydraulic Fluid. Try and keep dirt from falling inside. Not bad. Can we do it without a funnel? Can we do it? Yes, we can. Alright, now we'll give it a real test. Not a bad project. That certainly could have been much worse. It was a pretty easy fix. Another $87 poorer today, but that's okay. That's what happens. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did uh, find it entertaining or useful, if you click that thumbs up, I really would appreciate it. And if you've not yet subscribed yet on YouTube or followed on Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok, I invite you to join me. Thanks again for being here. And as always, I look forward to seeing you next time.